Canada is the largest country in the Western Hemisphere, and it's the second largest in the whole world after Russia. The country has a lot to offer, starting from its majestic mountains, glaciers, beautiful scenery, and its remote extensive forests are home to lots of wildlife. Canada is seriously huge, so it's no wonder that there are plenty of interesting things to see in the country. In this video, we'll show you some of the most amazing things found in Canada. From smoking hills to Cambrian worms, here are 15 strangest things recently discovered in Canada. Number 15. Smoking Hills You might feel a bit terrified when you see smoke coming out of the cliffs in Inuvik, in the northwestern territories of Canada, but there's nothing to worry about. The smoking hills are barren red-streaked rocks that have been continuously smoking for centuries. It looks spooky, and it's like a scene straight out of a thriller movie. In fact, the smoking hills have spooked many European explorers that first visited the remote landscape before. An Irishman named Robert McClure discovered these smoking cliffs in the early 1800s. The rocks in this area are obviously scorching hot, and so many immediately thought that the cliffs are producing smoke because of volcanic activity. But the truth is a bit different. The smoking hills happen because of underground oil shales in the area. Oil shale is a type of rock that is rich in a chemical compound called kerogen. These rocks produce petroleum products like oil and gas. The rocks found in this area of Canada are particularly rich in sulfur and brown coal. This is why they spontaneously ignite when the land on the hills erode. Once the rocks are exposed to oxygen, they produce smoke. After years of this continuous process, the landscape of the area gradually changed. This is why the rocks surrounding the smoking hills are baked and bleached by the heat, producing red and orange streaks. I'm really curious what the past sailors thought about this area before. The smoke makes the area pretty ominous, but I guess it's a good way to prevent explorers from venturing to the area as well. Today, this area is only accessible to planes, helicopters, and boats. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Signpost Forest Signposts are pretty common to see on roads, highways, and pretty much everywhere else where people in traffic pass by. But did you know that the collection of the most signposts in the entire world can be found along a road in Canada? This is the Signpost Forest, located at Watson Lake, Yukon. The Signpost Forest contains a collection of 80,000 signposts and counting. Each signpost in the location varies from street signs, welcome signs, to license plates. This huge and astounding collection was started by Private Carl K. Lindley in 1942. At the time, Lindley was assigned to help build signposts that indicate distances of several locations along the road. While he was doing his work, he suddenly got inspired and decided to create his very own signpost indicating the distance between the signpost and the location of his very own hometown, Danville, Illinois. The gesture was also a simple thing to help him with his homesickness. The sign he created read, Danville Ill, 2,835 miles. Needless to say, many people found the idea endearing, so many folks followed suit. And ever since then, people started to bring their very own signposts to the area, until it all accumulated from hundreds to thousands. Unlike before, the area is now being preserved, and you can easily see the signpost forest because of the huge arch on its entrance. Number 13. Whale Visit Whales are one of the most amazing creatures on our planet. In fact, one species in particular is known to be the biggest animal on land and in the ocean. It's no wonder that everyone wants to take a glimpse of these wonderful and majestic creatures once in their lives. Of course, it's cool to see protected whales in captivity, but there's nothing more amazing than spotting one in their natural habitat. This is why many people were surprised and delighted when they saw a huge humpback whale in St. Lawrence Lake in Montreal, Canada. People immediately flocked towards the area to see the roaming whale. There are many of them in Canada, but they usually aren't found in this part of the country. Usual whale sightings occur 500 kilometers away from the spot. Most people were surprised to see the whale, but many also expressed their concern regarding their safety while the creature is staying in the lake. After all, such a huge animal can easily damage small pleasure boats in the area. You see, humpback whales are usually found in salt water. They won't immediately die if they try to swim in fresh water, but it's not good for their health in general. People theorized that this one particular humpback got lost and disoriented while chasing small prey. 
Thankfully, the humpback whale didn't seem to cause marine traffic around the area, and after a few days, it appeared to be back to its normal state. Hopefully, it got reunited with his family. Number 12. McBarge It's safe to say that many of us have tried out McDonald's food at least once in our lives. These days, it seems like anywhere you go, you'll see the iconic McDonald's sign. Today, we'll show you the creepiest and perhaps the most unique McDonald's in the whole world. You might think what we're showing you right now is a boat, a submarine, or a floating restaurant, but it's not. Well, it can be considered a boat, but I'm still 25% right. What you're looking at right now is the McBarge, or the barge. It used to be a McDonald's floating in the middle of Canada. It opened for the 1986 World Expo in Canada, and back then it became a wonderful attraction. The barge had the title Friendship 500, and many people were eager to eat at the floating restaurant. The upscale location and the interior of the barge was innovative and ahead of its time. There were real house plants inside the barge, wooden floors, walls adorned with fine arts and top-notch furniture. Inside, the customers were served via conveyor belt, which was considered a very different concept. It was a cutting-edge technology in its time, and many considered it as a must-see attraction. However, after the expo, it was quickly neglected, and it stayed abandoned until 1991 when a real estate developer purchased the facility to transform it to an ocean and underwater establishment. Sadly, today it remains covered in rust in the middle of the ocean. Number 11. Dinosaur Mummy On March 21, 2011, a couple of miners at the Millennium Mine, some 17 miles north of Fort McMurray, Alberta, started out an ordinary day at work. Little did they know that they would find one of the most wonderful discoveries of their lives. There in the mine, they found the remains of marine plants and creatures that lived more than 110 million years ago. Among them were the remains of an ancient dinosaur. The fossil stretched 18 feet long, and it weighed nearly 3,000 pounds. At first glance, you would think it's just a weird-shaped rock, but you'll immediately notice its resemblance to a reptile's scales and outer covering. Scientists quickly found out that the bony mosaic of armor belonged to a nautosaur. A nautosaur is a dinosaur that lived around 110 million years ago. It was an herbivore that was covered by amazing protective armor. It looked like when the creature perished, its corpse was quickly encased in a natural muddy tomb, which caused its body to be preserved in such a wonderful condition years after it died. In fact, it was so well preserved that the scientists found traces of twigs, seeds, and leaf fragments that can be identified down to the cells. This has never happened before. And because of this nautosaurus mummy, scientists managed to know more about their diet and the plants that existed millions of years ago. Number 10. Garter Snakes If you're terrified of snakes, then welcome to your worst nightmare. In the small town of Manitoba, this horrific attraction happens annually. You're probably wondering what exactly this phenomena is. These striped black snakes are red-sided garter snakes emerging from their hibernation. Yes, I know it's a terrifying view, but some people consider this amazing and enjoyable. Thousands of tourists flock to the small town of Manitoba, but their numbers pale in comparison to the more than 50,000 garter snakes slowly making their way underground. During the harshest and coldest winters, these snakes seek refuge to their underground limestone caverns until their bodies can function again. Once they disappear, they'll take advantage of this big slumber party and seek a mate. Despite the terrifying view, garter snakes are not actually poisonous. In fact, many locals consider them as nature's pest control. Unlike constrictors that can still be terrifying because of their huge size and their tendency to choke creatures twice their size, garter snakes only prey on small rodents such as mice and moles. Just like cats, these snakes can easily get rid of rodent problems for people around them. They're relatively harmless. But you still need to be cautious around them because they have small teeth that can deliver a nasty bite that can easily get infected. Of course, if you're a rodent lover, you'll probably avoid these creatures. It's quite easy to identify garter snakes because of their slim bodies adorned with stripes. They come in all different colors, but the ones found in Manitoba, Canada have red and white lines. Number 9. Bean Puzzle Tombstone At some point in time, death becomes a very trivial and funny subject for many people. Before, many feared death and did everything just to avoid it. But as time goes on, it seems like mankind became accustomed to the subject. 
Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. If you scroll on the internet long enough, you're bound to see one of the tombstones and headstones that contain witty jokes and funny quotes instead of the usual name, date, and day of death. The Bean Puzzle tombstone gets the award of being one of the most unique and fun tombstones perhaps in the entire world. It's located about 15.29 miles from the West Montrose Covered Bridge in a rural cemetery. Rather than choosing the words, rest in peace, the bean grave marker has a huge crossword puzzle engraved in its stone. Below the confusing set of letters reads, Reader, meet us in heaven. If you stumble upon this grave alone in the middle of the night and read that line, you'd be pretty terrified. What lies here are the two wives of Dr. Samuel Bean, Henrietta and Susanna. Dr. Bean first married Henrietta, but she died just seven months after their marriage. He remarried again, but he only got to spend two months with her before she too perished. Quite unlucky. Heartbroken, Dr. Bean buried his two loves side by side and created this tombstone. He passed without telling a single person what the engravings mean. The bizarre and enigmatic epitaph attracted many curious visitors across the world trying to break and solve the puzzle themselves. You could say that the little town of Wesley had its own attraction since the headstone was erected in the 1860s. Many people tried to unlock the code that by the 1980s, the original tombstone became illegible that the townsfolk replaced it with an exact replica. Of course, among the first people that cracked the code was the cemetery groundskeeper that claimed he knew the code in the 1940s, but he never revealed the answer. I get it though, because where's the fun in spoiling everyone, right? If you want to break the code yourself, then you might want to pause in this part of the video. If you're done scratching your head over its meaning, here's the decoded message of the puzzle. The tombstone reads, In Memoriam Henrietta, First Wife of S. Bean, M.D., who died 27th September 1865, aged 26 years, 10 months, and 15 days, and Susanna, his second wife, who died 27th April 1867, age 26 years, 10 months, and 15 days. Two better wives one man never had. They were gifts from God, but are now in heaven. May God help me, SD, to meet them there. In the end, it contained a loving message of a sad and heartbroken man, hoping that perhaps in heaven, he could meet his failed loves once again. Number eight, Fairy Forest. The Redwood Park located on over 80 acres in South Surrey is a magical and enchanted forest. It's filled with more than 30 species of exotic trees native to North America, Asia, and Europe. The park was the product of twin brothers who inherited the land from their father. They filled the area with trees, and during their lives, they even resided in a tree house. Today, the Redwood Park Fairy Tale Forest contains a replica of the brothers' tree house, as well as dozens of tiny fairy houses. Many people believe that the Redwood Park was once home to little magical fairies, and so they took it upon themselves to place tiny and colorful shelters for them. This led many people, especially kids, to visit the Redwood Park to see the magical forest and experience its beautiful nature trail. There are also huge fairy doors in the forest that were said to lead people in a magical world, but sadly, only two of them stay erected in the park. It's definitely a joy to visit in this park, especially along with kids who'll enjoy and marvel around the magical forest. Number 7. Big Lonely Doug Most people seem to forget that trees are also living creatures. There's really something sad and melancholic about the way this huge Coast Douglas fir stands alone, away from the other trees in the Gordon River Valley of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Big Lonely Doug got its name because it's the second largest Douglas fir tree in the country after the Red Creek fir near San Juan Valley, and also because of its sad location. You might think this is just a simple story, but trust me, Lonely Doug has a lot of stories to tell. In the winter of 2011, logger Dennis Cronin set out on his job with his cork boots, cargo vest, and hard hats. He's getting ready to clear the forest of trees. While he was marking the area that needs to be cleared of trees, he noticed something in the distance. Among the sea of trees was a tall Douglas fir poking up through the forest's canopy, with a tall and thick branch wider and bigger than his own truck. Even as a logger, he recognized that it was one tall tree. It was taller than any of the trees he came across in his four decades in the logging industry. Lonely Doug stood at the same height of a 20-story apartment building. Big Doug is about 230 feet and has a diameter of about 12.8 feet. 
Because of his size, Cronin reached for a ribbon to mark the tree, indicating leave tree. This one simple gesture ignited awareness not only among the locals, but also all across the world about the cutting of old trees on Vancouver Island. Big Lonely Doug was saved because of its sheer size, but the other surrounding trees weren't as lucky. Perhaps someday, the giant fir would soon be surrounded by tiny saplings that will grow into equally huge trees as years go by. Number 6. Spotted Lake No, this isn't an extraterrestrial location, nor is this CGI. This is the mysterious Spotted Lake located northwest of Osoyoos in British Columbia's Okanagan Valley. It doesn't really look like an abomination throughout most parts of the year, but during the summer, the water in this lake evaporates, and instead of a patch of land, it reveals hundreds of huge and hideous briny pools. If you have tryptophobia, then you might feel a bit weird while looking at this spotty lake. This phenomena occurs because of a high concentration of minerals like calcium, sodium sulfates, and magnesium sulfate collecting above the water. Indigenous people of the Okanagan Nation consider this place sacred and magical. They believe that each of the lake spots had a different healing and medicinal property. In World War I, the minerals harvested from this lake were in fact used to manufacture ammunition. Today, visitors from around the world can visit the lake, but it's strictly prohibited to get too close to preserve and protect both the visitors and the integrity of the lake. Number 5. Polar Bear Prison for many people that live in tropical countries, seeing snow and experiencing cold winters sound like a paradise. But people living in freezing countries just like Canada know how difficult it is to manage sometimes. In Churchill, located in the northern part of Manitoba, people experience a very different dilemma. The town is located near the banks of Hudson Bay, and it's one of the most remote towns in the country. Aside from the freezing and deadly cold, the few people that reside in the town face another huge threat. Polar bears. Large predators. Polar bears are known to travel along the coastline toward their hunting ground in Hudson Bay, where they would stalk seals in the ice. Some polar bears venture too far and too close to the town's borders. Because of this, they developed a solution to the rogue bears. They established the only polar bear prison in the world. The bears would be subdued using a tranquilizer, and they would be transported usually through helicopters towards the polar bear jail. It may sound cruel, but it's an action started to conserve and protect both the village and the polar bears who wander too far from their habitat because of our changing planet. And now it's time for today's topic. More often than not, we portray aliens and extraterrestrial creatures to look like hideous, skinless, and frail humanoid beings just like the creature being carried by the man in the picture. This is certainly the strangest thing recently discovered in Canada. The country has a rich and wonderful wildlife, but I don't think this creature belongs to its vast forests. Most of the country's forests are isolated, so it's not too far-fetched that it hides some pretty interesting and bizarre creatures. What do you think of this creature? Could this actually be an alien or just another hoax? As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. Ice Bar What's cooler than having a huge party inside an establishment made out of ice, and out of glassware made out of ice? This ice bar in Quebec will certainly give you a magical experience. The entire igloo bar is made out of ice from its walls, floors, table, and glassware. You won't get the chance to flex your party clothes, and your attire is limited to thick jackets, but that's a small price to pay for the experience. The ice sculptures inside the bar are jaw-dropping. The fee to tour around the bar costs around $27, and that's inclusive of one free cocktail served inside an ice glass. Number 3. Shipwreck Lake Over the years, Lake Huron has become known as the shipwreck capital of Canada. Its waters span over 45,000 square miles, and an astounding 1,000 shipwrecks have been recorded here. Because of all the wrecks, it became a popular diving spot, earning a spot in millions of divers' go-to list all around the world. One of the most famous wrecks found in the area is the Sweepstakes Shipwreck, which is a schooner that sank after hitting a rock near Cove Island. It was towed into the lake, where it slowly sank in the waters. Number 2. Cambrian Worm did you know that they discovered a 500 million year old worm dating back during the Cambrian period in Canada? 
During excavations, they found worm tunnels in a remote area of Mackenzie Mountains in the Northwest Territories of the country. There, they saw superhighways or tunnels created by prehistoric worms. Along with their burrows, they also found fossilized remains of the worms that still had anatomical structures. These burrows and fossilized worms would shed some light about our understanding not only about prehistoric creatures, but also about the structure of our planet before we set foot on Earth. Number 1. Nuclear Shelter With everything that's happening in our world today, it's not too bad to always be prepared for the worst. What's more reassuring than having an extensive nuclear fallout shelter that can protect you from large explosions? This is ARC-2. It's a shelter located in Hornings Mills, Ontario. Its size is quite impressive. It's built from 42 school buses, and it can house 500 people in its tunnels. This shelter was created as conflict continued to arise across the world. Doomsday might be coming close, and so one person decided to conceptualize and create this fallout shelter in case a nuclear war broke out. Its construction began in the early 1980s and lasted for years. It cost a lot of money, but the creator found it necessary to protect people from imminent destruction. After it was built, it was given the name Ark 2 in reference to the great ark that saved the last pair of animal species and the chosen family in the Bible. The government repeatedly tried to halt the construction of the shelter at the time. Although they completely failed, the construction was finished. And while it's a good thing that the locals around the area would have a place to go, in case a nuclear war does occur, there's a downside. About 80% of the people to be accepted in the shelter will be children, which the creator thought was the most optimal population to prevent mankind from going extinct. So if you're an adult, there's a slim chance you'd be let in. Have you ever had the chance to visit Canada? If so, how was your experience? And do you know any other interesting places or things to see in the country? Let us know about them in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.